Hey, in this video, we're going to build and publish our very first app using Toolshed. So to begin with, we'll be building an easy and straightforward application that anyone can create regardless of the experience level. And by the end of this video, you'll not only have a working application, but have gained a few fundamental skills to start working with Toolshed and building apps with it. Let's get started. So here is the complete application that what we will be building in this video. So this is a product explorer where the data is coming from a fake store API, which we'll be looking into in a while. So this is a table which lists all the different products. And the moment you click on a product, you should be able to see the details of the product like image, title, price, and a little description with rating. So you could able to explore all the different products the moment you click on the item of the row, so that you should be able to see the product details. And all of the details, as I said, are coming from a fake store API product endpoint. So this is the complete, complete data that we are bringing into the Toolset application and weaving or exploring it in a simple app. There you go. So let's get started on building this from the scratch. Go ahead to your Toolset account and create a new app. And this is where you will be landing in. Right, so the first thing what we'd be needing here is a container as the background and which will be also holding all the different components that we'll be having for the application. So drag and drop a container and adjust the width and height of it so that it looks good. There you go. And the first thing what we'd be needing here is a table to list all the different product titles. So search for a table or it should be always on the top in the component manager. And once you have it, drag and drop into the container which we have just created and then adjust it to the middle so that we have the next image and the other components coming in. So drag it to the bottom and there you go. We'd be not needing the query panel for a while. We'll be getting back to it later. So let's minimize it from here. There you go. So the next thing what we'd be needing here to present the image, title, description, price, and the star rating. So to do that, we also would be needing another container to hold all of those items. Let's search for another container and add it to here. Adjust the sizes, this should be fine. So to get this highlighted, let's click on the container and go to the styles of it. And uh, let's add some shadows, maybe two into the X and Y, and let's have a blur value around five. There you go, looks good. So now we have the table and the container which should hold the image. So let's go ahead and search for an image component, drag and drop and drop it to the container. This should be fine. We need a text component for holding the title. So there you go. And then we can set the alignment into the styles tab, go to the styles of the text component and then go to the bottom and see the align text and set it to the middle. Okay, so we can also increase the height a bit. And this should be this should be the title we'll be updating as we have the data coming along. And the next thing we can have another text component for the price, drag and drop, have it up here and then change this to price and we'll update the field later. Okay, let's also set the style to the alignment to middle. And then we can make it bold. So you can go to the font weight, change from normal to bold. There you go. So we need one more text component to display the description of the product. And now uh, we can change the style of this font to lighter and also set it to the alignment middle. And we would need one more component to present the star ratings. So go to the component manager, search for star, or you can just search for rating. It should be up here, drag and drop it to the container. And then we would be not needing this text, what we call the label for the star rating component. You can find that in the properties tab, remove this up. And then you can set this to the middle, to a little bottom, and there you go. Okay, now the UI is ready. What we need is some data to populate the table. And on the moment I click on the item of the table, the details of the product should be displayed here. So first and the foremost to do all of this, we need the data to be coming along. So the data what we'd be needing is the fake store API, which is an endpoint with products. And you see the data up here, uh, we'll be bringing all of this data to our application. So go to your app and pull up the query panel now and now select the REST API as the data source and you click on it, you see that the default is a get request that you can create. So I'm gonna use that endpoint, fakestoreapi.com forward slash products. 
All right. So as given, this is an open end point. It would not need any headers or body or any authentication. So you can make a quick preview by clicking on the preview button here. And the moment you see the preview, you should be able to see the data coming to your application. So you can find all of this data in the query panel by expanding it to there. Okay, let me name this query as get products and you can create this by clicking on the create button. So the moment you click on that, you should be able to see the query is created. All right, so let me make a quick final preview. So how do you do it? Click on the preview button and you should be able to see the data up here. All right, so let us now populate the get products data to the table first. So how do you do that? So click on the table component first, and then you see the data, uh, table is selected here. Let's go ahead to the properties and let us remove this dummy data, which is currently displayed. So all of this data is here. Let us remove this up and now use the double curly braces and say queries dot get products dot data. What I mean by this, we are accessing the queries and the queries which we currently have is get products and from that we are getting the data of that query. All right, so here we go. The data is auto-populated. The columns are automatically generated from the field values. So with, within all of this, we'd be not needing all of this information which we are getting from the data to present. We'll be only needing the title of it. So let us remove the unwanted columns. So ID is something not needed, the price is not needed, description, category, and image. We will use all of this in the, to present here, but for the table, this is going to be a list of all the products. All right, so let us also increase the count. There is some limitation here for the properties to show the list of all the products, which is currently 10. So let us put it up to 20. There you go, we have a 20 products in the table. All right, so the next thing, is something we have to display on click of a product. Let's go ahead and display it on uh, the second container which we have created. All right, let's minimize the query panel again and let's go ahead and configure the image first. Click on the image component and you see the URL is something which is by default. Remove this and now we wanted to access the specific product of this. So let us click on a specific uh, table item which is a product, so men's cotton jacket. Just just click on it and go to the image and now go ahead to the component properties. Start with double curly braces and say components dot table one, which is the ID of our table. And then say dot selected row and dot image. All right, so if you see that, we are accessing the components, which is table one, the ID of the component, which is which we are using. And in that table, we want the selected row and the selected rows image. And the moment I go back and click on the canvas, you see the image coming up here. So let us check with the other things. You can click on other products. So the moment you click on that, you see the data is changing. All right, to make it look more good, what you could do is you can click on this table and also add an option to show the selected row, which is also called the highlight selected row so that you can turn on this so that you would be knowing what is the active row that is selected. Okay, so there you go. You have the image up here and let us also set the title here. How do you do it? Click on the component, go ahead and remove the text up here and start using the curly braces and say components dot the same way, table one, which is ID of our table and dot selected row dot title. I hope you would be able to understand. We are going to the components and our component table one and selected row and to the title. All right, there you go. We have got the uh, title up here. Let us also set the price. So we have the price up here and we can start using the curly braces right from here. You can say components dot table one selected row dot price. There you go. You can bring it a bit down. And now let's go ahead and set the description in the same way. Remove this, say components, selective row, dot description. There you go. And now let's go ahead and set the last thing which is going to be the star rating. And click on the component and you see the properties. Go to the properties and change the default number of stars selected. Remove this and let's access the value from the table from selected row dot uh, rating dot rate. There you go. So let's go ahead and check with other, other products. So click on this one and you see the details of this product. There you go. 
And to publish this, what you need to do is to go ahead and cl click on release. All right, now the version one is released. So to share this, you should be able to click on the share button and then you can make this public. All right, so with this, you should be able to access your application across. So this is the very first app that you can easily build by fetching an API data into the application and presenting into different components. So the components we used is a table, containers, image, text, and star rating. I hope you are able to build your very first app with Toolshed ready. Thank you.